Hi guys, welcome back. This is Dr. Pepper also tournament and we're in the final stage. We'll be watching Chakruna against Raphael and one of those players will advance to the playoffs here. So this is be or not to be for both of those guys. We know Chakruna, right? Uh, yes, we know Chakruna. He's a uh, kind of known Swedish player, if I'm not mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah. I'm not I was sure if he's Swedish. I think he's actually French. I know he was friend with uh, Swedish players, and he was also friend with Daniel. That's how I met him. He also came for this DreamHack Bucharest. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I remember. We shaked hands. Uh, he he beat Orange. He beat Orange. He kicked out of Orange of the tournament. Yeah, that's true. He was in the same group. Yeah, now I remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but now he will watch his game against Rafael, which this. Uh, I mean. I don't know Raphael at all. That's a mystery player for me. He made it uh, this far, so he must be good. Yeah, well, I'm I'm really curious if that will be a really good game to watch. I hope so because I like to get, cast games where we have something interesting to to watch, like um, either really perfectly played games or, on the other hand, really badly played games. Because th <laughs> those are the two, two most entertaining ones to cast and yeah, to watch course. too, right? Yes. Uh, it's either you play, you watch and learn from the best, or you either just have fun uh, watching some weird stuff happening. You can uh, also learn from weird stuff happening. Yeah, that's also true. Like if you see something really bad happening because someone was unaware of a rule, or maybe there's an RNG outcome happened which you didn't anticipate, people can actually learn because they maybe not will have will not do the same um, the same mistake again. Like yes. those players. So yeah, definitely. Um, I think this is like one of the most important stages in a tournament. The last stage before the cut. This is like the stage where you where you are the most pressured, where you feel that you need to win so that you don't waste everything you earned until then. So it's like mm -hmm. the pressure might get to the players. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's true. Uh, still, they don't uh, use the camera, so that's... Um... Kind of a relief, I think. I think for the players because uh, you know being broadcasted with a player cam uh, also brings a lot of nerves, you know, at, uh, to the stakes. And um, of course, this is the final match. And uh, if you win, you advance to the playoffs. If not, then you have to to go again into the qualifiers. So it's a lot of time you have to um, to uh, spend uh, again in the tournament. So. It might affect the, uh, the players' nerves here. Okay, so we jump right into the game. We can see Hunter on Raphael's side, and then Warrior on Chakruna's side. I also know that Chakruna is a really known wa Warrior player. He kind of likes the interesting Warrior decks. We'll have to see. We'll, uh, the, the viewers are not seeing the game yet, and we're waiting for the spectator mode to actually peg out. We'll see how it goes. For now, we'll have only one player's hand, so we'll see uh, Chakruna's or Raphael, Raphael, I guess, uh, hand, which will be playing Hunter against Chakruna's warrior. We can see he has a really interesting mana curve. Either one to three or either coin companion on two to follow up with the bow. What do you think is better? Mm, we'll see the next draw. Like, if he gets an example a Mad Scientist, I will just play Mad Scientist there. Because I want to keep the coin for a Savannah High main. You can also play the juggler into companion into coining Loteb. That's also good. Or getting a four drop into coining possible Savannah. There are so many ways to play mid range decks, and they you have also, to choose. Yeah, it's also um, there's also also an option if there will be like an acolyte of pain. You want to deny the draws as soon as possible with the weapon, with your weapon. I, I mean. Now juggler sucks. You definitely wow. want to play. Hmm? Yeah, but he got an owl. Which is super important. Wow, why would you play Life Dragon into that? I would uh, go for a Coin Animal Companion. It's good for two reasons. You can get two out of three, which deny the weapon. And then how does he answer Companion? He just plays Acolyte. You play Bow, you deny yeah. the Acolyte. Then you yeah, play yeah, four yeah. drop, then you play five drop. It's like perfect. Exactly. And now your curve is kind of screwed up. And you have to play the Bow now. Yeah. Because you can't let uh, Warrior have an Acolyte of Pain on board when he can Taskmaster it and trade into Pilot Shredder or into a Huffer or whatever. So you have to use the bow now. That's a pretty small mistake that can cost you later on. 
And I don't think that this mistake matters if we see the other player's hand, because we don't, so we are yeah. like... It's actually nice to cast the game from one player's perspective, because we can uh, know how he thinks, like, without seeing the other's mm -hmm, hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, and th that's the perfect Ask Master. So now, we, not only he gains two cards from the Acolyte of Pain, he also trades for the Huffer, which is perfect, because an example of that would be a Misha, there would be no option to clear that with only the Taskmaster. Yes. There's a lot of things that went wrong, but he could stop that by just playing Companion one turn earlier with the coin. Coin, which mm. might be useful if he gets a Savannah, so we might never know. Hmm. This is a really weird board spot. Um, without seeing the Warrior Hand, I would say that you have to trade, but maybe he has some other options. I don't know what, maybe Fiery War Axe? Oh, another Cruelta's Master. He wants to really abuse that draw engine from the Acolyte of Pain that tells us he has a really bad hand. Yeah, I guess. Cycle. I guess, but it also puts two creatures on board, which is kinda important. It also may be meaning he doesn't have an Execute in hand. Yeah, that's something good. Like, if he had an execute, he could have played a cruel execute, right? Mm hmm, mm hmm. Oh, the Belcher. Now he goes. Like, Belcher is the perfect answer for the Baltic Shoddy, so he can go face. And the only problem might be unleashing the Hounds. With. with Like, unleash the Hounds now with Hunter's Mark would be perfect. But he doesn't have it, so it's not a problem. He can go low tap to, st to stall the game one more turn. If he gets unleashed next turn, it's just game over. Juggler Unleash is so good. Well, if you play low tip, then the two, um, you can attack with the Palette Shredder, so then one on the Taskmaster and the Belcher will trade into into the low tip. So I guess that's not what you want to go to what what you want to do. Hmm. Yeah, silencing the Belcher seems to be the best option. You can also Hunter's Market and kill what it about, with a bow. What about just going face here? Going face, but you have to Hunter's Mark the Belcher. You don't want to give him value. Yeah, well, he goes for this, for the clear option, which I maybe not blame him if I would have a Savannah Hyman in my hand, but he doesn't have it. He tries to make it look like he has it. But yeah, this play is good if he has Savannah, as you said. Or if he had Unleash. No, if he had Unleash, he had to trade in the other one. Yeah. Or he had to go face, I mean, sorry. Yeah. This is well, still a really weird spot to be in. Like, and now Wind destroys you. And now the coin is really useless, unless you top the gun, uh, boom, next turn. Hmm. It's really weird. It's not easy to say. You can have Knife Jaguar coin low tip if he trades, and then you can trade yourself if he doesn't trade. So you get so many knives out. Well, two, not so many. And you have the bow, so you kind of are able to manipulate the board. You also have the option of drawing either Unleash the Hounds or Savannah High Main, which puts you in a really good spot. Hmm. Well... As the war... Uh, as the war... well, second Belcher will be okay. We don't really know if it's... oh, okay, it's Control Warrior. Yeah. It could have still been Patron, like... I yeah, saw I, I saw some with Belchers through. Oh, look at that! So, top deck 7 on turn 6. I don't think you play it. Yeah, but <laughs> you have to yeah, play it. Yeah, good. Well, you play it. I, I think you play it anyway. No, I, I think wait, you wait, trade. Wait, wait, no, no, no. You, you trade play... facing and coin the low tab. Yeah, that's that's the best option here. True. Hmm. Dragon is not bad. Still a free two minion, which can be dealt by no, task... no taskmasters. Never mind. No wait, taskmasters still can target that, mm -hmm. so there's no difference like between a free two without without a power and with with that power. At is least it... for 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 a warrior. This is the way to beat uh, warriors with uh, having freezing traps. They're really effective. Yeah, it's basically better than saps. Yeah, it's like a multi-value sap. Well, yeah, they, they don't really have chargers, other than Gromash. And almost anything you get frozen is like good value, excepting some cards like Acolyte of Pain, Cruelty's Master or Armorsmith. But you can reduce that happening by just controlling the board and leaving them up with one only one monster, as we see right now. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I still think that the Hunter player is favored to win this uh, game. Looks really good for him. Huh. Well, he can't... Wait, he has six, uh, six mana, right? So for six mana, he can play a weapon... Seven? Yeah, never mind. He had the coin. Yeah. Unleash? He needs unleash. Now he has to kill both uh, both bombs. You hunt as more for sure. Yeah. You can trade everything in place of Ana. Oh, I'm not sure if I really like that. Would you favor so more uh, trading first and playing Knife Juggler into Mad Scientist? I guess Savannah's better. No, no, you it... you could have still played Savannah and trade the trade the Lotev into one bomb, trade Bow into the other bomb, and leave the freezing job versus. Silvanas. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. never mind. Now like the... now, freezing job is gonna be useless. Yes, I agree completely about that. I I'm not sure about that play. There are like a lot of sketchy plays that might cost him the game. Well, as I said, maybe, the pressure maybe is really this, huge. this way he's bluffing a snake trap instead of a freezing trap, you know? Yeah, anything can happen. The mind games are definitely real. And as I said earlier, at this spot, the pressure is kind of being felt by the players. Hmm. It's not easy. So he procs the freezing trap. And now he knows he just can attack with the second second bomb and kill one of the hyenas as well. Well, he didn't. Too bad. The hunter player is in a spot where... Oh, what? Why, would, why wouldn't you play the knife juggler? Well, I, probably he misclicked and then he didn't play the juggler to not look stupid that he missed damage. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, the oh. the only see. reason to keep the, to keep the juggler... He probably has Gadon, the warrior player. But the only keep reason to keep the juggler is a possible unleash, which is isn't even that efficient. Yeah. If there's no. a Geddon, this is a GG. Okay, there's no Geddon. Probably a GG anyways. Sunwalker? What? <laughs> and he just draw a trap. <laughs> this no. is why I love open qualifiers. You see all kinds of anti-aggro stuff that you've never seen? in like a super competitive play things that might not always be super consistent but can win you games in open qualifiers and that's efficient like Sunwalker is good yeah Sunwalker is good but now well, now he uh, actually he kept the, kni uh, the knife juggler so it benefits him by playing the snake trap right now <laughs> it's really weird <laughs> and he doesn't want to kill the mad scientist now because that procs a freezing trap from his board, from his deck, right? And then the shields medal will get it. And that's, that means additional 4 damage. I mean, 5, um, five yeah, but armor. That means, that means 1 extra bow charge. But yeah, the 5 armor is probably better than the extra bow charge most of the time. I wouldn't attack with the mad scientist like at all. That was really weird. Oh, it's Dragon Warrior. So he has a Nefarian there in, the, in his hand, or Ash Drake, or maybe Isira. That's a really interesting there from Chakruna. He is known as an inventor. He doesn't play the meta. He plays like something weird. He's kind of the Darkonyx. Hmm. Um. He might run Nefarian, he might run Alexstrasza, he might run Isera, he might run all of them. He might yeah. run Chromagus. Oh yeah, right, Chromagus is also a possibility. What do you think what of Chromagus and Sunwalker? <laughs> you draw a lot? That looks like a nice way to... Stabilize? Win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kinda. Like, usually Belcher is better than Sunwalker, but if you run Belchers and Sunwalker, that's a way to beat Agro. And what is going to be played in uh, open tournaments, mostly aggro, that's what everybody's feeling. And then you go into control matches when you play really odd cards. <laughs> um, 
Sludge Belcher is really good here at proccing the snake trap. A really efficient way. That's That's probably true. the only way. That and if you run Sunmaster or Argus. But we have to remember that Chakruna still has a Shields Maiden in his hand. For 8 mana, but still. still yeah, that's seven, 7 armor with the hero power. Yep. But is that the best option on turn 10? Where maybe he has one of the nifty dragons. Like, we know he has one of the dragons because he got the effect of the Blackwing Corruptor. So, who knows what we will see. Um, What do you do here? You know it's nature. Do you proc it? Is it that bad if you proc it? I don't think it's that bad. Slam? Oh wow. Uh, I saw Fibonacci playing Slam in uh, Control Warrior over Krolta's Masters because he thinks Krolta's Masters are not that efficient. And Fibonacci is the warrior god. So... That role passed from KitKats to Fibonacci after KitKats didn't play that competitive for a lot of time. True. Um, Hunted Keeper is like one of the worst draws you can have at this point. I really don't think it's uh, what you want to see on turn 13 or 14, if I'm not wrong. I think there's no way of Hunter coming back from this. Like, he has there, to get... There are ways, definitely. <laughs> Dr. Boom, maybe, maybe, but it's already far-fetched. The, uh, the warrior has just to draw a death spite. No, that's why that will won't, won't make it happen. He has to uh, he has to get a whirlwind in his hand. The warrior doesn't really want to proc the trap. Yeah, but with a whirlwind, it's enough. Hmm. Or, or that. Now you get Ma rid of. He managed the... to kill it Found. without yeah. rocking the secret. That's insane. And that's it. And that's game. Yeah, that's game. That's lethal. For well Chakuna. deserved for Chakuna. Yeah, we really well played. Well, we didn't see the uh, hand from Chakruna, but from what I have seen on the board, that was really well played. Kinda misplayed by Raphael here, uh, yeah. especially with that turn 2 Nav Juggler, uh, which felt really off the game. Yep. And uh, I, I guess that, that turn when he gave the tempo back to the warrior actually cost him the game. Because if he would play the Animal Companion, Leok was unkillable, Belch uh, Misha was unkillable, only Huffer was really bad. And that's it, and uh, even with, with the Huffer you just deal 8 damage. Uh, and you don't trade for, for the Accolade of Pain, so I guess it was, that was way better. Yeah, you're right. It was like a kind of weird game, but I'm glad I saw a really interesting deck from Chakruna. He definitely deserves it if he got uh, this far with uh, this kind of... Uh... Warrior deck, right? Warrior deck, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I still wonder what what dragons did he run. He didn't want to play them. Maybe he didn't want to show them to the stream. Maybe he has like some no, secret no, no, no. deck. There. Uh, he he is restarting the client right now because that was a bug from the spectator mode, I guess. So we'll I hope we'll have to, uh, we'll get to see uh, his hand in the next game. Yeah, but we'll not see the warrior anymore. We'll see something else. Oh yeah, right. Oh, never mind. Mm, but we'll bad. still see something interesting, I think. Maybe now he goes from like full control dragon warrior to like the most aggro deck in the meta. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really like the Hearthstone meta right now. It's really diversified and you can play so many types of decks and you can make so many combinations for conquest. And in a best of three, you just have to pick your two best decks or the de two decks that you think work the best mm -hmm. versus what meta you expect. You're like, yeah. I expect Hunter, I expect that, I expect that. I'll just bring these two polished decks to just beat them. We'll have to get, uh, get to see uh, in a few seconds. We're still waiting for the players to get ready. And um, this is the last match for both of you guys. And um, in the meantime, when we're waiting for the players, uh, I want to remind you, those are open qualifiers, so everyone can sign for those. Yeah, I know, I know what you what you thought, Radu, <laughs> what to say. <laughs> and so today is the first qualifier. Uh, then at the last day of my and the Sunday 31, uh, there will be second qualifier, then we have June 16, which will be the third qualifier, and the fourth qualifier, the last one, will happen on July 11th. And top four from the each qualifier will will get um, to advance to the playoffs, will be, which will be played on July 25th and 26th. And those is 
that playoffs will, be, will have be happening for 16 qualified players and only one of those uh, will be the Dr. Pepper also tournament champion for the first time. And now okay. we're jumping into the game. As I said, the most aggro deck ever. He's playing uh, Chucky's face warlock from yesterday night. That's exactly what they want sure to see. With the zombie trolls? Uh, no, he's playing just uh, spell power warlock then. <laughs> Damn it. That's Chakruna, right? With the spell power warlock. I saw um... double soul fire and my smile shown up on my face. I guess that Chakruna with the warlock. Who do you think is favored? The spell power warlock? Oh, is that dragon? Chakruna is going with the dragon team. Yep. Many players went to the dragon team. Dragons are like starting to make a showing in the meta. The problem is like you 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 very highly favor your opening hand. Like if you don't have a dragon for black and corruptor or black and technician, you're in a really tough spot. Well he has Azure Drake. Yep. And then he has Emperor Torisan to follow up. Like the way I see this game is going to go like implosion on turn four, gaining most of the board, then corruptor just completely gaining the board for you. And then his opponent will play something, then he trace the board, plays Torisan. Perfect. What, what could you want more than this? True. Oh, he gets the mortal call from the top. That's just insane. Exactly what you want. Yeah. Um. Oh. Well, you played the Tinker Down Technician. That's nothing to think of, I guess. Next to What's the best Shredder. part? What Trinity is the best part? is not bad. But I guess yeah. Stealth is, is the best, I don't, uh, you know. Oh, he doesn't want to risk. I would have just rolled on the other one. You you have to hope you hit four. If you hit four in that spot, it's just game over. I know. I like to play risky. Which one of those do you Corruptor? I think you Corruptor the mech one. What do you think? Hmm. Well, you want to deny the Blast Mage, right? So I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Implosion. Implosion. Okay. You want to use Soul Fire. It's not bad, he wants to soul fire. And that's actually okay. The problem is if he discards the Azure Drake. Okay, he discarded the, the best card to discard here, I would guess. Hellfire might be better. I don't know, Hellfire might be useful in the lay in the future. We see Raphael running Azure Drake. Do you think Azure Drake is better than Lotheb in this kind of meta? Excuse me, can you repeat? Do you think Azure Drake is better than Lotheb in this kind of meta? Uh in the mech mage i would say i would favor the low tip i was playing with one azure drake for the most of the time but then i switched for low tip and it was actually winning the game uh by itself and azure drake is just you know cycle so it's not so important in most of the time and low tip can seal deal or save you from a you know crucial unleash the hounds or uh fireball or whatever is just being played by your opponent yeah i like the Load it more in the mechanical mage because you value your board a lot. Yep. This is a really hard turn for Chakruna. He has the option of playing Emperor, but without that much value, or he can just black in Corruptor with a little bit more value. He decides to tap and play the Defender of Argus. That allows him to trade more efficiently, uh, mm -hmm. apply more pressure. But at the same time, being a really weird, awkward spot. He doesn't have like any kind of healing, and being on 14 is really weird, especially when there's an Antonidas looming. Oh wow, and Dr. Boom for turn 7. This, is re this will be really tough for Chakruna here. Corruptor, Dark Bomb, well you kill the 4-2 And then you Dark Bomb the... Um, the Azure Drake, Azure Drake. Hey, Finish it off with the 1-1 one, one and kill off the Clockwork now But you're, you're still in an awful position, you have no way of dealing with the bombs Which will deal additional damage because you have the big game hunter But there's a stealth part for Antonidas Wow uh, the Warlock needs to apply a lot of pressure in a really fast pace. I think Lotte BGH is the way to go here. 
You think so? I would I would say it's Arthur Drake, Big Game Hunter. You need to load it because if he has another the spare part, you're pretty screwed. You can also save the uh, loader for the turn after he plays out Aidas. Right? Then he he can only play one fireball and that's it. But I guess yeah, you're right. Load up here would prevent the uh, Antonidas distance, so maybe it's better. I'm not sure, to be honest. So this should be a bad scientist ping. And yeah, and bless mage. I guess this is over anyway. Uh, not really. Anything can happen. Um, let's see. Let's see. Thanos Hellfire? Nah. Twilight Drake, what does it give you? I guess it's Twilight Drake into Azure Drake into trade for... Isn't Azure Drake better played first? It draws you the cards, so you still have the same amount of HP from Twilight Drake. And yeah, if you draw so. something that you want to play, it's a misplay playing the Twilight Drake first. Yeah. Now double fireballs in hand, go to the face for 12. So Raphael is probably gonna take this game. Yes, I would guess so. And if Raphael wins, the last game is gonna be between Raphael's Hunter and Chakruna's Spell Power Dragon Warlock. Hmm. Okay, so there's no way of dealing with that board. You have to just concede here. Like even if you play, even if you play um, anti heal bot here, you will be at 18, and that's not enough to sustain the damage from you know a pepper mobile with with the uh, with the fireballs. Yeah. So um, who do you think has the edge in the last game? What was the other one? A midrange hunter, right? Midrange hunter and spell power warlock. I would say I would favor almost always the hunter in that matchup against a warlock. You because know, it's even, really aggressive. Yeah, because it's aggressive and its hero power is just, you know, way more important uh, for for the game plan for the hunter than for the warlock. Like his warlock's uh, hero power will actually power up hunter's hero power. So I guess it's better. Mm hmm. We'll be jumping into the game shortly. Still some issues with the spectator mode, but this will be fixed really fast. And there it is. We see the opening animation, so you will see the uh, you will see that guys also in a few seconds. Uh, oh, there is see. a anti kill bot. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say too. It's an anti kill bot in the world. Like that's uh, a little bit special. It might help in the hunter matchup. Do you consider keeping that anti kill bot? I guess a Midrange Hunter, I would say it's it's a no-go. Kazan, that. interesting. Kazan has to be good in this meta if people play a lot of Hunter. So it's really good in the mirror match. But is it really the card you want? You probably have to cut the Shredder for adding the Kazan. Hmm. So... He has the Drake, which is important, but then Leoka is not bad, to be honest. It's like, you don't exactly need to rush through this game. So, if you play turn 3, you can coin out Implosion. What do you think about coining out Implosion for Mad Scientist? That will be a freezing trap, freezing trap most likely. So then you attack with next and you can attack with one of the imps to to trigger that. I think that's not bad. Mm. But then you're kinda weak to unleash the hounds. But do you, you have to play the um the implosion at some point of the game. Hmm. It's really complicated to say. Depends on the implosion RNG. If you feel lucky, it's really good to roll four on the Leoc. Hmm. Well, he went for the Soulfires, so the safest 
option here. <laughs> this is not an easy turn. Like, you can Hellfire, but I, I guess Implosion is still much better. And you can, if you hit for two... Four. Oh, four. Okay, Implosion. never mind. Implosion. <laughs> that's huge. Oh, look at that. Oh my god, that's even better. The Jackalock was like the best draw ever. He just turns the board, he turns the board around and... Yeah. From a losing situation, you go to a really winning situation, and all the jugglers hit. Or yeah. Wow! Perfect jugglers. Perfect jugglers. Well, there's a big difference, right? There's a half fire. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a diff. Ah, oh, no, it, there's no difference. It is a <laughs> yeah. half fire. But still, the chance of that happening was like, mm, it was 80% and, and then 75% and then 66%. Yeah. And then 50-50, and he won all of those. Yeah. Important in other matches, and this actually not important at all. So I guess Palter Shredder Hero Power, right? Uh, yes. Actually, and... Web Spinner might be better than a Hero Power. Well, there's no difference if you think about the Molten Giants, because he will tap anyway. No, no, uh, Web Spinner is better, because you want to play Houndmaster, and you want to empty your board so, so Quickshot can be more effective. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sense. for that reason, you have to play Web Spinner. Like, mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. normally, I would sometimes play Web Spinner over Hero Power, just because you want the board presence. One damage over two turns is the same as a Hero Power, so you don't miss that much. And you want to empty your hand, that's the main reason. The Beast... Here is one of the crucial, crucial draws that he has to get... The, uh, to get to be back into the game. The Beast is a really bad target. Yeah. Beast Savannah is like way superior. Savannah is awesome. And now he has to draw a silence for that, I guess. Ooh, Savannah oh, Savannah gets be Oh, oh <laughs> look at that. But then he can play the Beast. There's still a Siphon Soul, so you didn't exactly be, you're not exactly worried about that. <laughs> yeah, you BGH that for sure. So, big game on what? Why would you do that? Um, I guess... Uh, I have no idea. Uh, like... Okay, yeah, it makes sense because you will proc the freezing trap with your defender of Argos. Exactly. That, to be honest, that's the best play you can make this turn. But he could play Technician. He will play BGH instead of the Technician. I don't know. But it's a bigger minion, so maybe it makes sense. Yeah, maybe. The hunter is still pressuring the board in a really effective manner. Yeah, and the owl is a turn too late. The owl, the turn before, would be insanely good. Yeah, on the savannah. Yeah. You couldn't BGH it afterwards, but you could still soul fire it for 5 and kill it. Mm hmm. If I mean, you think about it, you st you'd have still used three cards. The Soulfire, the Owl, and the Discard from Soulfire to deal with Savannah. That shows how you how good Savannah is. Yeah, Savannah is just like a most insane Kern, Pilot, and Sky Golem combined. Beast is pretty good right now. You have to be afraid of the BGH, but I agree, Kier, at this point. You might even push face for four just in case he has BGH. Knowing opponent bo both guys' hands uh, and looking at the previous turns, you don't expect a BGH because if he had a BGH, he should have used it on the Savannah. I really like using the hero power. Just in case he has the BGH, he can still win the game by just pushing a lot of damage in. Mm -hmm. Well, now BGH is really good with Argus. You get a free free. Just insane. True. That's a game winner, BGH. Yeah. It turned the game around and you gain a free free minion. It's like, wow, what just happened? I don't see the hunter getting back in this spot. He can. He definitely can top deck like um, kill command. Kill command, but let's he, do it. But he didn't keep the one of the, his beasts, beasts in his hand. I don't think the creepers are gonna die. 
You don't really yeah, turn yeah, into yeah. people at yeah, this point. Right. You just go as a Drake, Blackwing Corruptor on face and hit the face so you can win next turn. You'll put him at 19, and then you attack for 6, you put him at 13, and then you have 6 plus 4 plus 5, which is um, 15, and he's at 13, so um, he's kind of dead. True. And what do you die to? You don't, you don't, you don't die to anything. You die to prob, not even to Leroy, I think. Do you die to Leroy? No, you don't die to Leroy. No, he would have to get Leroy and lose the hands in one card. He played in a, in the right order. You have to play Corruptor first. Yep, true. Loaded. Now well, that's game. That's game for Chakruna. Chakruna so Ch wins the series and goes into the playoffs, right? Yeah, into the playoffs. That's that's um the last last round. Of the qualifiers so that, that was fast for chakruna i would say like this game was turned around in one turn like because of the big game hunter yes it looked like it, it looked really grim for chakruna in the beginning but then a few things happened and uh actually we we witnessed few back-to-backs back-to-backs um counters like unleash the hounds for the implosion right with perfect juggles, then we saw Hellfire for that. Then we saw um, seven high main with seven attack, which was uh, traded for Soulfire. And then, and then the Soulfire, Soulfire discarded Emperor. If he, if Soulfire would have discarded BGH, the game would yeah, have been won would by be the Hunter horrible. player. Yeah, yeah, that would be like disastrous for Chakruna. Without the big game Hunter, I don't think he would have won the game. Like there was no answer for the Beast. Afterwards, like because he played the Siphon Soul on the 4 2 Hyena. So we already have a known player in the playoffs. And yep. I also heard that Renny Hour won versus Pesty, so he's also in the playoffs. So... Okay. Oh, that's that's really great news. It's really good news. I always like when um, known players are proving uh, uh, that they can play well. Uh, Max uh, messaged me and told me that he also won. And uh, that means that three out of the four players until now are known players. Well, Max is not that known. He He's also like life coach, a uh, poker player. He was mm -hmm, a poker mm -hmm, player. Mm -hmm. He might still play poker. Um, I have no idea. But yeah. So, so we'll be, I think we'll be jumping to a short break before the last match. And we'll see. So see you, uh, see you guys in